92 or 90, around then, 91. And um, so we're prepared. I, we get video cameras that we borrow from the ACLU and stuff. And sure enough, we videotape the police coming in and ordering the homeless to take their shoes off and throw them in the garbage trucks, taking their blankets and sleeping bags, taking pets off to the pound, uh, um, arresting some people, and, and telling them all they're not allowed to live in San Francisco anymore. And they even got two airplanes with thermal imaging devices. They could fly up and down the streets and the parks and see the body heat from the homeless and know where to uh, arrest them and, and plan their uh, attacks. And so um, we uh, end up, uh, um, you know, like because we're organizing in support of the homeless, they decide that they're going to uh, outlaw food not bombs altogether in San Francisco. And so we start to get arrested again. And this time we get a uh, court order against serving food without a permit. They get they delete the permit process, and now we get felonies. And so the police come out, and this they have a special anti food not bomb squad. They start beating this up. We actually have a video called "Food Not Bombs Greatest Hits," where you can see the police beating us for serving salad and so on. And uh, we restart risk arrest one day a, a month with food not bombs. And now there's a group. Uh, uh, of people including uh, uh, Rabbi uh, uh, Michael Lerner and uh, Father Vitali and, and th that start this group called Religious Witness with Homeless People. And they like started going out and getting arrested with us like uh, you know, probably more than t once a month. And this campaign goes on for, for months and, and months and months. And, um, but as a direct result, more and more groups start up all over the world. So then there starts to become chapters in, in places like um, uh, uh, all over, like, well, Melbourne, Australia, uh, Prague, Czechos uh, Czechoslovakia, and then uh, the Czech Republic, groups in London, Iceland, Tasmania, New Zealand, Argentina. And the, every time there's a, another wave of arrests and there's more media about it, more and more Food Not Bombs chapters start up. And um, so it ends up backfiring on the, on the authorities because instead of getting rid of us, they're just making us uh, more popular and more and more groups are, are starting. So then um, during this period, it, finally the police stop arresting us, but now we have Food Not Bombs chapters all over. And yet the, uh, the problem of homelessness and hunger is, is still increasing. And so we realized we could do a couple of different things. So there was the National Coalition of the Homeless had called for uh, a campaign on Thanksgiving uh, called Housing Now. And it turned out that the biggest shelter in San Francisco, Black Memorial Church, was across the street from a single room occupancy hotel that had just been shut down. And they had forced hundreds of people out onto the streets as a result. And they're going to convert this hotel into a $300 a night hotel from a $25 a night hotel. So this gave us the idea of sneaking into that building on uh, the night before Thanksgiving. And when the mayor came to cut turkey and uh, show that he was a good guy and give a slice of turkey to the first homeless person in line, then we would appear out the windows of this abandoned building across the street with banners saying that they're really, why are you shutting down uh, living spaces for people and forcing them on the streets uh, in, instead of actually protecting the people's rights? So when the mayor arrived, we hung our banners out, and one of them was a banner called Homes Not Jails. And so uh, because the savings and loan crisis was happening at that time, it turned out there were lots and lots of foreclosed properties, very similar to what we're seeing today. And um, so we decided that we start a program called Homes Not Jails, where we would ride our bikes around the city, write down the, abandoned, the addresses of the abandoned buildings, we'd go to the tax office at City Hall, try to figure out who owned them. If it was a family that just couldn't keep up the building, then we'd ignore that building. But if it was often the case, as is today, there was four or five banks suing each other. So we yeah. would end up uh, saying, okay, that, bit, that property is one where no one really seems to know who owns it. We'll just uh, break into it ourselves, put our own locks on the doors. And then when uh, we'll at dinner, we'll make an announcement, anybody here want a free place to live? You would be surprised how many homeless people want a free place to live. It's like so popular. So then we would like, uh, say, okay, meet us tomorrow at 9 in the morning at this address, and we'll give you a key to a building, and we'll help you fix it up, and we'll even deliver food to you the first week, and so on. And according to the book No Trespassing, we had uh, keys to 400 houses, 
and we had as many as 200 of those houses occupied at any given time. And then other cities came up with thought the idea was great, and they started doing the same thing, and then they also called uh, Reclaim the, the Land Movement, and, and so on. So this uh, concept just kept happening and happening. Now there's a resurgence of food not, uh, um, of um, uh, homes not jails actions happening all over the country again. And then a few years uh, later, we, uh, we're going to organize a big Food Not Bombs gathering uh, in uh, 1995 on the anniversary of the founding of the United Nations. And it turns out we're being arrested and beaten every day, twice a day, at UN Plaza. <laughs> and the city has to get rid of us because, um, unfortunately, you can't celebrate the dedication of the new monument to universal human rights with people sharing free food to the hungry right next to, to the monument. <laughs> so we organized uh, our second Food Not Bombs gathering. The first one was during the uh, October 12th, uh, uh, 500th anniversary of Columbus discovering the New World. And uh, that's when the first Food Not Bombs book came out, Food Not Bombs, How to Feed the Hungry and Build Community. And then this second one uh, was going to be 10 days in, in, at UN Plaza using like local facility buildings and stuff around the neighborhood, arts centers and stuff for our workshops. And so uh, we get a convergence space together in a little office at above a theater right next to UN Plaza. All these people came through there to, to find out where the workshops were and, and where housing was and so on. Over 600 people went through the Convergence Center in, uh, in July of 99. We also, by this time, had started making our own FM radio stations. And so we had our own pirate radio station just for the gathering, and then we had San Francisco Liberation Radio and Free Radio Berkeley. And so one of the workshops you could take is how to make your own uh, FM radio transmitter. And we realized we needed to, uh, the news you know, was, uh, there was a total news blackout about us sharing the food and being arrested every day and, there's, and so on. So we decided to start our own project called Indie Media, where we would upload to the web news about what was going on in the gathering. And we would try to get all the people coming to the Food Not Bombs gathering to go home and start their own Indie Media centers, which uh, they did. And so, uh, after this huge event where there was uh, 600 arrests and um, like say at least 600 people went through the Convergence Center, we had workshops on organic gardening, banner making, how to make giant puppets, how to cook vegan meals for a hundred, things like that. Then uh, th those people all returned home to do more and more Food Not Bombs organizing. Then shortly after that, uh, my book got translated into Spanish and so some activists from uh, Spain uh, asked if we could do a tour of the United States, and we had talked about them. I went over and did a book tour in Spain and found out they were trying to stop the Master Treaty or the Single European Union and, this, and the Euro, saying that there would be all kinds of economic, political uh, crisis, environmental crisis, and that the World Trade Organization was a part of this whole plan of, of, of centralizing the economy. And so we came and did a tour of the United States and Canada called the Unfree Trade Tour. And on that tour, we spoke actually here in Lawrence, and um, we decided that uh, we would uh, encourage, we'd show you about what the WTO was, what NAFTA was about, uh, and then we encouraged everyone to uh, uh, protest the World Trade Organization if it ever has a summit in the U.S. or Canada. And so everyone that signed up on our uh, contact sheet, um, it turns out like a, a year after the Unfree Trade Tour, it's announced that there's going to be a summit in Seattle in November of 99. So we contacted everybody that signed up on the contact sheet and said, let's go to Seattle, we'll try to shut down the World Trade Organization's first summit in North America. And thousands of people did. We had a thing called Direct Action Network, and we had a nonviolence pledge that people signed, they agreed to be nonviolent. We uh, had all these huge blockades in the streets of Seattle to shut down the WTO. I mean, it was. Uh, really put the whole idea of anti-globalization movement in the United States on the map. And that became something that Food Not Bombs was involved in, and we provided meals at uh, WTO protests and G8s and so on all over the world. And then most recently, uh, I happened to get invited to speak at this thing called the Big Food Fight in, um, in uh, Northampton, England. And this young person got his uh, 
was getting his master's degree in food politics, and he had me and a person from the equivalent of Second Harvest or, or Feed America both speak at this event. And on the way, it turned out the cheapest way to get to Europe was to go through Iceland. So I go to Iceland, and it turns out that Food Not Bombs have been sharing food every week out in the town plaza. They have not only literature like what I have here, but they put some of the literature on signs. They actually wrote, hand wrote in Icelandic and in English with Sharpies, these, uh, like uh, the Cook for Peace flyer and so on. And so uh, when I got there, I learned that people were eating at the Food Not Bombs table. The housing market had crashed. It turned out the president was also the head of the national bank. He invested in the U.S. housing market. The economy was crashing as a result. People were reading the flyers, decided this is crazy. You know, we have no say in the uh, direction of our country. This is outrageous. So after a few weeks of discussing the literature on the table and having these discussions at the Saturday Food Not Bonds meal, they decided to march off to the parliament building. And so when I got there, the marches were just huge. And the, the government ends up resigning and, and uh, um, gives up and says, okay, we quit. And the, some of the Food Not Bombs kids and some of the people that have become involved in the march decided we should rewrite the constitution of Iceland to make sure this never happens again. And so they do a crowdsourcing campaign where all the people in Iceland email in their ideas and change on a wiki um, the constitution of Iceland. And then uh, the banks uh, say, hey, we want to get all our money back from this uh, bad investments. And they were able to organize twice to keep uh, the, to pay the people of Iceland back first before they paid back the banks. And so today, Food Not Bombs is in over a thousand cities of the world. Most recently, I uh, was uh, uh, visiting uh, Kenya, and actually Food Not Bombs every week goes and picks up the bread at the uh, Westgate Mall, where that huge terrorist attack just has uh, been happening the last couple of days. And that's where we do our email and all that in, in Nairobi. And Food Not Bombs in uh, Ethiopia shares food every uh, week at St. George's Cathedral in the center of Addis Ababa. And uh, I've been to uh, um, Nigeria a bunch of times. And so when I'm, while I'm finishing making the tofu spread, well, I'll show like a little tiny uh, like 15 minute video, maybe 14 minute video about Food Not Bombs in, in, uh, in Africa, and then I'll hand out a sample of tofu spread to everyone, and people can ask questions. So, thanks for coming. Move this in the way. Yep. Oh, okay. We'll move this out of the way. Maybe this way. Mm -hmm. And if you want to uh, set it through the, you want me to set it towards angle over the front there. Well, everybody can see this, right? Yeah. Yes. Cool. And then I'll just sit over here and get the tofu spread. Excellent. You ready to? You yeah, you can you can show the movie. Great.
Anybody is accused of being part of a domestic terror group. Dateline's Elizabeth, Elizabeth Tardich caught up with him, almost predictably, in poverty-stricken Nigeria. <laughs> Nigeria's Christian southern city of Calabar. American peace activist Keith McHenry is the centre of attention. He's dedicated the past 26 years to expanding the Food Not Bombs organisation around the world. Now there are almost a thousand branches spread across every continent bar Africa. So what better place to start than Nigeria, Africa's most populous nation? He's here to motivate them to start their own food not bombs chapters. And this concept of like sending money in and sending food in from abroad has not really changed the situation in Nigeria or in Africa. And if people can organize in their own um, groups, like in food not bombs model, then I think that they can achieve a great deal. Keith wants to create a society based on peace and democracy, where basic human rights are guaranteed, like the right to food. We're uh, cooking rice with vegetables, and I also have mushrooms and that I brought from America, and soy. Keith McHenry's family has a long history of military involvement. His father developed the Minuteman missile, and his grandfather helped plan the bombings of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Another forebear, James McHenry, fought the British in the American War of Independence. Keith wants to make amends for what he considers the sins of his forefathers. As a founding family of the United States, I feel it's my responsibility to do what I can to, to return the United States to a democracy if it ever was. Overwhelmed by the excitement of hungry children, he approaches the community leader for advice. Give it up. No, we are in three groups. We are in three groups. Three groups? We have three groups. We have blind, we have left us, we have three groups. This is a two Okay. I need to ask his own leader. So, we want to get something like this. We share into three. Okay. Blind, left us, three groups. In Nigeria, at least 100 million out of a population of 140 million live below the poverty line. Feeding the homeless and hungry in the name of food not bombs is not an activity the US government appears to support. One, two, three, four, we are watching Bobby War! One, six, seven, eight, we will not participate! According to the American Civil Liberties Union, the organization is one of the latest peace groups placed under FBI surveillance and on an anti-terror watch list. <laughs> of being terrorists and accusing people like me and being a terrorist. And I was accused by the Pentagon for being a terrorist just because I organized a protest against torture. Despite being labeled a terrorist and spending nearly 18 months in jail, Keith took his campaign on the road. He now tours the world to help promote food not bombs. The Muslim community in Lagos is surprised to see him. Food, not bombs. I'm very happy to see you. Thank you. But I'm very happy to see an American like you today. Because some people are saying that Americans are killing people in the, uh, on, on the whole world. They do. So people are criticizing America. Right. They don't want to see an American. Right. But we want to see American like you. When we see right. American like you, we know that you are a brother. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. 
you're not very patriotic going around the world speaking out against the American government. Absolutely not. I don't think what the American government is doing is, is right. Nigerians look at America as being a democracy, yet we don't have basic fundamental democratic rights within the United States. And they've killed people all over the world in their, in their effort to maintain um, political and economic control of the world. And that's not democratic. Hillary, you're meeting cats. Hillary. Hillary is an American. And the president food no bombs. Keats' next and perhaps most important stop is with the National Association of Nigerian Students, or NANS. Of the center. Greatest Nigerian students. Without taking money. With a membership of about 40 million, NANS is a very powerful lobby group. Money to 